on April 2, 2018. The world said goodbye to Winnie Mandela, former wife of late South African national hero, president, and global icon for peace and human rights, Nelson Mandela. This lady had an indelible effect on me as a young middle school student, not just because she was one of the most important women in the world at that time, but because she was widely accepted as a genuine freedom fighter, termed traditionally reserved for men. Furthermore, she assumed the role of the face of the struggle, an affectionate nickname for the anti-apartheid movement, after her iconic husband's incarceration on trumped-up charges. This is my tribute to her. Night after night, the TV news was riddled with images of mass demonstration, police brutality, and bloody violence. My parents tried to shield me from it by sending me to my room to play but I would sometimes sneak back out and peek around the corner, to my complete horror. Men, women, and children, some my own age, being cruelly hosed down, beaten, gassed, and attacked with dogs. I couldn't understand why this was happening to them. I just knew that it wasn't right. Terms like township and places like Cape Town, Soweto, Johannesburg, Wider Pretoria, which I had never seen or heard of before, became seared into my brain as temples of torture and symbols of segregation. But there were other images too. Images of struggle, determination, resilience, conviction, faith, and hope. Images of a woman called Winnie. She mobilized the black South African masses in the name of a man, a renowned ghost of the same surname. Many mentioned him every single time that she spoke, and people listened intently whenever she spoke, making sure that though he was no longer seen, he would never be forgotten. She told her followers that this ghost was alive and well, fortified with spirit, and content in the knowledge that the struggle would endure through them. I remember that she would end every speech with the inspirational mantra, Amanza! to the boisterous eruption of an already fired up crowd. Indeed, she was the face of the struggle. In doing this, Winnie not only kept the name Mandela at the forefront of her people's consciousness, she also piqued the curiosity of a young middle school girl, way over on the other side of the world to learn about this ghost. Who is Mandela, and why is he in prison? I began asking my parents and teachers some visibly uncomfortable questions about South Africa and the apartheid system. So many, in fact, that they sometimes had to get back to me because I had them stumped. I marveled at how this lady, a mere woman in a country, continent, and world where women bore little significance, let alone influence, besides motherhood, was able to command the respect, loyalty, and devotion of millions, including men, even in the face of violence, pain, incarceration, and sometimes death. Winnie Mandela taught me that women could and do matter. Yes, women can lead. Women can mobilize. Women can change the world. February 11, 1990, I was glued to the TV as I watched recorded footage of Winnie Mandela escorting her husband, hand firmly in his, out of Robben Island prison as a free man. Thus ended the apartheid era, signaling the dawn of South African reconciliation and healing. This was in no small part due to the undying resolve and selfless sacrifice of a woman called Winnie Mandel. No one is without fault in this life, and Winnie was no exception. In 1996, then-President Nelson Mandela quietly divorced her after she was accused of murder, human torture, and kidnapping, allegedly occurring during the height of the apartheid year. This was clearly no easy decision for him, 
to abandon the woman who had seen him through 27 years of wrongful imprisonment. It's therefore no wonder that he visited her often in jail, even though he was then president of South Africa. We may never know or understand why Rennie followed, but her heroic role in the anti-apartheid world of revolution and the liberation of South Africa's indigenous people is indisputable. At Nelson Mandela's funeral in December 2013, as a unified nation wept for its father, its Madiba, and the wider world mourned the loss of a sterling citizen, Rennie was seen in yet another supportive role, this time in symbiosis, as she and Mandela's widow each sought solace in the arms of the only person who could truly understand their loss, each other. Rest easy, Rennie, for your triumphs far outweigh your sins. Thanks for taking the time, folks. Donna. Did you enjoy this post? Then please click the like button and add a comment below this video. To make sure that you never miss one of my vlog posts, click on the subscribe button below. You should also click the little bell next to it in order to receive alerts whenever I send out new diary posts. Please see the next slide for a list of my pages and channels.